One of the things that makes square matrices interesting is the fact that they map spaces onto themselves. Uh, and what do I mean by that? Let me illustrate that. Say we have a um, two by three matrix, so that's not a square matrix, and we multiply it by a three-dimensional column vector. Uh, what we get out of that is a two-dimensional column vector. So say we uh, regard this operation as a function that takes this three-dimensional vector as an input and gives this two-dimensional vector as output. So we would say that this function here, it maps, it maps a three-dimensional space onto a two-dimensional space. Um, and that's perfectly fine, but in the case of Square matrices, say a three by three matrix. If we apply this matrix to this three dimensional column vector, what we get out is a three dimensional column vector. So again, if we regard this as a function that takes this vector as an input, it gets it gives us a three dimensional vector output as well. So in that case, this function g maps a three-dimensional space onto itself. And therefore, we can, we can consider this, this linear function g, we can consider that to be a transform of the space itself. And that is a linear transform of space. So what could that be? Well, that could be a rotation around the uh, origin, or it could be a uh, squeeze. Uh, so we can squeeze the coordinate system by, by such a uh, transform, or we could flip the coordinate system by, by such a linear transform. So this um, transform here, represented by this matrix here, does something to this three-dimensional vector here. And the result of this transform is this output over here. Um, that's one of the reasons why square matrices are particularly interesting. So let's put that here. And um, another reason we are interested in square matrices is because they kind of behave like regular numbers, like real numbers. And what I mean by that is that you can, uh, you can take square matrices, say a matrix A, and let's remind ourselves that it's a square matrix, and you can uh, multiply it by another square matrix, and the result will be a new square matrix of the same dimension as A and B. I mean, of course, if A is a 3 by 3 matrix, then N has to be a 3 by 3 matrix, and C will be a 3 by 3 matrix as well. So that's more or less like real numbers. You can multiply real numbers and you get another real number out of it. And it naturally uh, raises the question, um, do we have an identity element for uh, matrices? Uh, I mean, if you think back from the other, the previous video, um, we looked a little into group theory and uh, we saw that one of the requirements for a set to be a group 
is that there's a there's an identity element and it turns out that there is a meaningful way of uh, defining an identity element and that's the uh, what we call the identity matrix and um, it's well it's really just uh, a matrix of zeros and then it has one ones in the diagonal and that's what we call the identity matrix oops and that would be the identity element um, notice that we can meaningfully talk about uh, a diagonal uh, because the matrix is square so it makes sense to to talk about a diagonal you can't do that for matrices in general and um, you may remember from the previous video video that um, what defines this identity element is the fact that um, when you multiply an element by the identity element in this case the identity matrix the result should be the element itself and you can check for yourself that uh, no matter what matrix you multiply this identity element by it will just um, result in the same matrix so this is indeed the identity element of square matrices that makes sense uh, so the next question you might ask is um, do we have a uh, an inverse element for every element in uh, in the set of square matrices do we have an inverse element and uh, that is can we find an element that's just denoted a to the minus first so that the product of these two matrices is the identity element this is uh, analogous to saying that we have to find an element in the real numbers so that 2 times this element is 1 and uh, of course that element exists it's just 2 to the power of minus 1 so it's 1 half in this case but can we find such a matrix so that this is uh, satisfied and the answer is uh, well sometimes and sometimes we cannot I guess it's pretty easy to think of a matrix um, that hasn't got an inverse uh, that would be the matrix of zeros let's say a 3 by 3 matrix so the zero matrix there's no matrix um, say B whatever we should call it that we can multiply by this zero matrix to obtain the identity matrix I think that's uh, more or less obvious so uh, so it's not surprising that um, that some matrices even square matrices don't have an inverse but it, as it turns out there are a lot of matrices that do have an inverse and uh, we call these matrices invertible matrices and the ones that don't have inverses um, we call them non-invertible in well funny enough um, and uh, sometimes you can meet the expression a regular matrix reg oops regular matrix which just means it's invertible and uh, you can meet the expression singular which is another term that says it's not invertible and um, it turns out that, that there's a number that you can calculate for a matrix in order to find out whether the matrix is invertible or not and um, that number we call the determinant and if the matrix is invertible the determinant is not zero and then of course if 
it's not invertible then the determinant is equal to zero so the uh, matrix is singular it's not invertible its determinant is equal to zero so these are just three ways of saying the same thing more or less so how do you calculate uh, the determinant well i'll leave that for another video um because it's quite involved but um uh yeah we haven't got time for it here by the way, uh, this zero matrix over here, it's completely uh, corresponds to the number zero in the real numbers uh, because there's no number x that you can multiply by zero to obtain uh, the identity element with respect to multiplication. That is the number one. So, um, so we have like a, an analogy here uh, in the real numbers just wanted to make that point so let's just recap what I mean by the matrices behaving like real numbers um, you can uh, multiply them by each other that's certainly something you can do with real numbers and there is an identity element that is the identity matrix and um, some of the square matrices even have inverses um, like we know it from the real numbers and then we learned a few new expressions a few new terms the first one was determinant and um, this number well it has a geometric Kill uh, interpretation as well, but uh, in the first place, this number just determines whether the um, matrix has an inverse or not. So if the the determinant is zero, the matrix is singular; it, it doesn't have an inverse. And uh, if the determinant is not zero, that is any number but zero. Um, well then the matrix does ha have an inverse and uh, we say that it's invertible and just before I let you go there's a there's another term that you need to know and uh, this is the term trace and the trace of a matrix is just the sum of all the diagonal elements of the matrix so for example if I have a 4x4 four four matrix then the trace of this matrix would be the sum of the diagonal elements. So the trace of, say, it's called A, would be A plus F plus K plus P. That's pretty straightforward, I think. Well, that's all for now.